All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Uh, also, a good time to join here. Uh, it's been kind of a boring month here, um, swing trading wise. We've been stuck in a range here, uh, but we are getting close to what I think is a turn. So we've been holding out. Um, now is really kind of the, the time to, to, to get in as I think we're getting a pretty good turn coming up soon. Anyways, um, let's get into the video. So doing this a little early again, we are going live uh, at 4.05 Eastern time for members. So we're doing a little uh, live stream Q&A later after the bell. But into the markets here, I was um, just sitting here getting ready to do the video. I wasn't going to talk about much. And then we just got a little dump here. Um, in the last literally like five ten minutes and um i didn't see any news here i'm kind of trying to check the wire on some of my other screens right now this could easily just be opex stuff um we had a gap down this morning on the hot ppi number again data coming in hot we we, we forecasted that with the two-year uh treasury the two-year was telling us that was going to happen markets have been holding up though despite that um, but take a look at the two-year right now um, this just happened here. So that was a little flash crash there in um, two-year bond yields. And if we look at the ZB, same thing. Um, so pretty good dump there, back, right back to the lows of the day. Um, this could just be OPEX stuff. It probably is. Um, you can see we just kind of triggered a little head and shoulders there on the QQQ intraday. So who knows, maybe we go back to the lows. Um, we'll see uh, about that. Right now, the volume is very light. And we had a nice gap down this morning, um, and the dip was bought. I mean, that's really the way to put it. Um, we're now seeing kind of by the dip, that environment is now back on. And, um, you know, I think, the, you know, you saw probably some zero DTs come in to try and uh, short the market down on the open, and the volume was just too light. They've pushed it right back up, probably with zero DT calls, honestly. Uh, look at that V shape there. I mean, that's, that is short covering, that's gamma squeezing, you name it. So you look at the Qs, look at the Russell there, huge V shape on the intraday there, and then the Vixie kind of coming in. All the Vixie was holding up um, earlier today and actually was, was trying to put in a higher low as the markets were moving higher. So maybe that was our indicator that um, this market wasn't going to just push right back up. In fact, I would have been kind of surprised if we had just pushed up here, given the fact that it's OPEX week. So they just they just broke. You know, a lot of people yesterday saw that close and were like, hey, let's go long here. Um, we're going to gap up. We're going to 420. Um, we talked about the possibility of that happening um, with that 100 point move post of expiration. That did not quite happen. We did get a 600 point move to the downside, uh, however, or a, a 60 point move to the downside. And then, you know, basically what a four, another, uh, what, 408 to 430, another 50 points. So in total, we had a 110 point move uh, today, but not in one direction, uh, like we talked about yesterday. But either way, they burned, they broke the bull's backs this morning, then they broke the bears. Um, and I think you're just getting, you know, dumb money to kind of chase this up here and they're not trying to pay those out you know tomorrow that you they call it theta theta burn thursday and then we have opex friday so i, I would expect that's what this is i could be wrong i haven't seen anything come across the wire yet i'm, I'm just looking on my other screens right now um i know that biden is kind of jawing about china right now um yeah, I'm not seeing anything on the wires here. So again, it does look like kind of OPEX action, but that was a pretty, pretty crazy sell there. Um, I will notice, or I will note that semis have been soft all day long. Um, and really Tesla has been kind of the leader until they got that, um, that recall news around 1240. So that was a little bit of a, obviously it pushed it down, typical OPEX stuff, by the way. Um, but Tesla was very strong this morning, as was Apple, dip was bought. Um, Google held up really well. Microsoft is under pressure here. Um, we've got Meta and Netflix rolling over now. So tech coming under pressure here, but again, watching the semis, that's the second day in a row that the semis really kind of underperformed here. So SMH was, you know, basically flat yesterday. Today it's down 1.7%. If we look at the Qs, you know, the Qs were up decently yesterday, had a nice possible breakout candle. Now they're down 1% on the day and the semis are down more. So that's two days in a row of semi uh, laggard chip. If that continues, that is a sign of weakness for the entire market, not just tech. Um, now, we, 
we got to give the Bulls, you know, the, the upside bias here until proven otherwise. But just a few things. Again, with the semis there, um, that's one major one. But another thing, too, um, I know they bought the dip pretty nicely, but that let's flip over to the spiders. But we, let's look at, uh, we'll talk about the cues first. Um, that, that should have followed, we should have followed through today. That should have been a, a breakout. <clears throat> and if you're the Bulls, I know everybody's talking about this bull, oh, the bull flag, bull flag. Why can't you break it out then? You know, why, why can't we follow through? Um, why is that an issue at this point? And then the longer that this takes, here's the spiders, and the longer that this takes to, you know, we backed off, we broke yesterday's low, and we're going to close inside of yesterday's candle, but this should have been a power move, um, and it wasn't. And it kind of reminds me of back here when we had this bull flag failed. Why did it fail? It just, you know, one of the things I was saying back then in December is like, hey, guys, this is taking too long. It should have, they should have been able to break it out right here. And the fact that they couldn't break it out here is bearish. And we were short for this. The bear flag, too. Um, we, we flipped long in uh, mid to late December. And this bear flag started to, to get long in the tooth. And I said, they should be able to break this down by the end of the year, or the beginning of the year. And it took too long. And then we just pushed higher. Um, I'm starting to question why is it taking so long? If the bulls supposedly have all this control and everything is great, um, why can't they push this higher? So um, if you're still seeing a lot of bear frustration, the bulls still have technically, like, you know, they have a good technical picture here. Um, at least on the daily time frame, I see a lot of people saying, like, oh, the technicals, the technicals. The technicals on the daily time frame are good, yes, but you still got to zoom out. And again, I'm going to use the cues here. Um, and I, I talk about this all the time. We got to use those bigger time frames. Um, this is still just a monthly bear flag, you know. So you have a down move here um, inside of this red bar. You tried to reverse that. You close back below it. And we're just chopping inside of that. Um, so again, use those bigger time frames. They'll tell you a lot about what's going on. A lot of people are saying, oh, the technicals are great. They are on the on the short short term time frames. The bulls are holding up well, but those bigger time frames will tell you a lot more about this market. Anyways, um, okay, so new lows here. Well, at least new hourly lows. Tesla, new low of the day. So Tesla coming in. Again, I would do this video a little bit later, but um, we do have the live stream after the close. So trying to get this out a little bit sooner. But a nice little fade there for the cues. Let's take a look at the Russell. So the Russell has been holding up well, um, at least for today. It did gap down pretty sharply, and then we had that V shape went green, um, and now it is back to the flat line, or well, back to negative here. Um, again, just trying to hold that 20 moving average here. We went up and tested. We talked about that red bar high at 90, uh, 195.12. We basically got there 194.87. So we'll see. Maybe that was a test there, and maybe that's a rejection here. Again, I, I would wish, you know, I wish I was doing this video a little bit uh, later now, but at the time that I was about to start this video, there was nothing going on. I mean, it was absolutely dead out here. So interesting. I will try to take you into at least around the 3.30 time frame here, and we'll see what this market does. Um, but again, there's the Russell. Um, basically got to that target. The Dow... Um, still struggling. Um, you know, we can probably even get rid of this wedge here. I'm not even a big fan of it anymore. It's kind of, it's kind of weak. Um, the lower trend line is still pretty valid though. We haven't violated that yet. Again, this is still holding up. Nothing terrible here on the weekly either. You still have a lot of resistance up here at this red bar. Um, the red bar high there again, 345 is still kind of your target for now. Maybe a pierce of that if we do continue up. Um, if not, um, who knows? I mean, like I said, we are into the risk period now, so that means we're looking for signs of a top. Um, but again, until proven otherwise, again, like I said, bulls still have, uh, you know, near term, the near term bias. Anyways, over to the semis here. We talked about that already down 2% now. So let's look on the intraday. Yeah, they're heading back to the lows there. And that white trend line there, in case you're wondering, is right here. So I've got that drawn on. So that's back to June. We hit that little double top kind of area. And then we broke through that. And we've just kind of chopped through it. So um, right into that area right now. And again, semis are still holding trend. You still are holding this green bar. But if that breaks, really on the downside for bears, just in general, you want to see this candle go. Um, and that, that really coincides there with the... 297 area and the 405 area on the spiders. That's what really, that's what bears really need to do. Um, and first step is breaking that 20 moving average. So anyways, um, semiconductors still holding up, but showing a little bit of laggard chip for the second day in a row now. IGV via cloud. Um, 
down two percent as well so that's actually an outside move down so pretty pretty weak move there for cloud i know we talked about trade desk the other day they had, they had good earnings that came in a little bit roku reported um big move for roku i remember when we had this i bought um we bought two legs one at i want to say 40 and change and we bought more at 38 and if i had known it was going to go up to 75 i would have held it that uh much longer here um, we got about we got up to about 50 bucks on this so that was i was happy with 50 dollars on that trade um, but big power gap there for roku but rest of cloud uh under a little bit of pressure here today let's look at salesforce yeah salesforce outside move down there um so get oracle Oracle holding that green bar, but still a down day there. So yeah, IGV, you know, lost all of yesterday's move there. So a little bit of lag or chip. Again, volume's not too heavy. And it's still holding trend for now. So there's nothing to say this isn't OPEX stuff. I'm still checking, by the way, still checking the wire here. I don't really see anything as far as news. I don't see anything right now. Unless it was just Bullard here. I know Bullard was speaking. Um... He was on the microphone and pushing markets around as usual. Nice, it's nice dump here. So we should get back to 409.50 right now. That's going to be support intraday for the spiders. Q's nice rollover. Wow. So I'm just reacting to this live here. Normally I have a little bit more of a presentation all set up, but given the circumstances here, Amazon fading pretty nicely. Transports, nice rollover. That's what I'm going to talk about next. And the dollar, okay. Well, let's look at the dollar really quick. I think that closed out. Um, yeah, that's closed out. So, so this dump started at three o'clock, and the dollar closes right at three. So, <laughs> interesting. Let me see if I can find on Trading View here if the dollar is pumping up. Not really. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing this kind of kind of cockeyed today here. But anyways, let's look at the transports. So um, gap down this morning, and these were also a week today. So take a look here. Big move, big power move down. And then we rallied back up, and we got above that. Um, <clears throat> but it took a long time versus, again, the spiders. We just blew right through it. So um, transports with a gap down that big red bar, whereas the spiders never really had that sell candle. It was pretty much just a buy the dip pretty much the whole way. Um, so again, a little bit of weakness there. Didn't quite get to that 15.5 area. Um, so again, let's not make too much out of it. You do have a little inside bar there on the daily, but the trend is up, so we'll respect it. You did close below that green bar, so that is a little bit of weakness. IWM coming into the 10 minute 100 here. Let's see if the spiders can get a bounce. If I wasn't doing this video, I'd probably try to scalp it right now, but this is interesting. So we have, I have this penciled in as the risk period. And by the way, there's a lot of uh, vol premium rolling off tomorrow. So um, hedges are going to be disappearing. Nice dump with volume. This looks a little bit more like, this looks a little bit less like OPEX stuff. Interesting. I'm still trying to find stuff on the wire here, guys. I don't see anything going on. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let me try and get through this, the rest of this here. Um, okay, so transports, let's look at yields. We already talked about that. Here's the 10 year. Um, that did push higher today. Um, yields have been in you know breakout mode here. The two year is flat right now. Again, really just a dead cap bounce. We talked about the 7.5 retrace yesterday. That got defended, um, but nothing spectacular here. I mean, look at this. You know, you've even got kind of like an, you know, over the, you just look at the hourly, you know, it's just a bear flag. Um, so two year not acting well, by the way, the Fed, the two year yield is now ahead of the Fed funds rate again. Um, not by much, but it is ahead of that. And that is a problem for the market that will be a problem very soon. Um, you see the 30 year here also rolling over as well. That is much weaker. Um, and you see that nice little flash crash candle there with volume. So 30 year unable to get support at this green bar. You've got support at this pivot. And that green bar high, also this pivot low. So it could be putting in an M pattern here. Um, usually when you get that, it's kind of the opposite of a WV. So we'd be looking for like a, 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 excuse me, a small rally and then a lower high potentially on the 30 year. So we'll be watching for that ZN, the 10 year also down as well. Um, so bonds continuing the trend down here. All right, um, XHB, this gap down pretty sharply and did come off the lows nicely. 
you do have a bullish inside bar here on the daily, so we'll respect it for the meantime. Um, again, holding the 20 moving average, and again, this is gonna trade generally with the market, but it did seem responsive. Um, take a look at that gap down this morning, it w and it flushed down pretty good on the first candle, so it did seem a little bit more responsive, finally, to the producer price index and to some of the uh, inflation data that we've been seeing over the last week here. There's the ITB again, same thing there. VNQ again, continues to be soft. You now have a daily chart, lower low and lower highs. So VNQ continuing to show weakness doesn't mean it can't rally if the market gets a bid, uh, but this is relative uh, weakness here that we're seeing. All right, let's go over to XLF. So XLF taking a hit here with everything else right now. And this wedge is starting to get tight. Um, so again, we're watching this here. Again, we can't rule out another little bid up but that wedge is starting to get tight. I know JP Morgan is definitely on the weaker side today. Um, inside candle here, but it really did not participate much in that rally, um, that relief rally, or really at all here. And you can see the bottom falling out of it here on an intraday basis. So JPM under a little bit of pressure here. Um, some other banks I'm looking at. Let's look at KRE. KRE had a, yeah, KRE tested yesterday's low there. And that's, that's near the lows now. So a little bit of weakness there from the regionals. Again, you guys know my thoughts on financials here. I do think they will be a short pretty soon. Um, maybe even next week. We'll see. Uh, broker dealers. Broker dealers. Um, of course, they're higher, right? So up 1.35%. Man, what a move there. It's basically at all-time highs. So 519.04. Uh, that's what we got to look for now on the XBD. Um, we do get, again, I've mentioned this recently, a lot of the time you'll get a rising wedge like this and it'll push through it first and then you get the rollover here. But broker dealers, I think they're just, they just love this volatility and they're, they're loving selling these options. That's the explanation I can come up with. Um, and everybody knows about the zero DTE craze, obviously. So that's why I'd, I'd have to, that's my explanation for why they've been able to hold up here um, in in this market but anyways uh on to crude here so energy hanging in there okay energy is looking interesting specifically crude um do you have a little micro inside bar here if this can hold up this might actually get a bid here so i'm actually kind of eyeing crude a little bit um still have that big picture bear bias here at least medium term if this continues to hold um but if this consolidates here um on the daily a little bit more this can get a bit and make a run at that weekly high. So we'll be watching for that kind of next week. Um, but for right now, crude just hanging in there. Nothing really too new to report on that. XLE also down, um, but just fractionally down just half percent here. Still inside of yesterday's range. It is going to lose that green bar low, though. Um, so we'll just, you know, that's a micro kind of bear development for today um, but again it's hanging in there energy's holding up well xop same thing still has the inside bar unlike xle and then oih also holding up very nicely as well again still looking for 350 nat gas rolling over here don't know if it quite made a new low it got very close here and i think it will i think we got to make one more low here on nat gas and then i will think then i think it's time uh for a pretty pretty substantial rally in that gas again historically seasonally we're getting into that period but i also know for a fact a lot of people are a lot of people tried to buy down here and i think they're just it's they're trying to flush them out one more time so either way um that gas basically close to the lows of the day here anyways uh dollar index which you already mentioned continuing higher here and again markets ignoring the, the data right now i think a lot of it has to do with positioning um too many people trying to short the market and you saw that really the last week or so that is starting to change though as we're seeing the kind of buy the dip mentality come back in here but the sell-off here pretty unexpected this looks a little heavier to me than just opex games at this point and the reason i'm going to say that is because the vix is pushing up nicely usually they try to keep the vix pretty suppressed let's take a look at the actual vix yeah getting a bid interesting Still, I'm not seeing anything on the wire, by the way. I'm going to try one more time and check my other screen here. Yeah, wow. Just, it's just dead here. Yeah, really, unless this, this is all just bullard, I have no idea. But anyways, um, okay, VIX 
forgot where we left off here. We were on energy, net gas, dollar index. Let's get over to gold here. Um, gold kind of hanging in there. Again, dollar stalled out. Let me talk about the dollar real quick again. Yeah, so this should be a stall out level around 104 and change. It might have to do some more consolidation, but this is poised for a move up. Gold here, again, it's getting close to that target. I told you guys for a while, 1825. It might have a little bit lower to go. Um, it might get a rally first, but again, it will get down there. Um, if it puts in a lower high first, then we'll probably look to lower. So maybe like 1800. But if it gets down there in a straight line, I might even buy it myself uh, for a quick swing. Same thing with silver. It's getting close to that 21 level. Um, you got the 200 MA down there on the weekly. Um, we're into the 200 MA now. So this might get a bid. You're a little oversold. Um, but again, a lower high puts me on guard. I wouldn't want to buy the that 21 level if we rallied up and put in a lower high. So um, I'm just avoiding them for now, but I will be looking to get into silver specifically in the future. And then platinum actually green on the day up 87 basis points. Trying to, trying to hold that falling wedge. Again, we talked about that yesterday. A lot of time you get that fake break to the downside and then you get a pop. So we'll see if that can follow through tomorrow. Um, but yeah, platinum recouping some of those losses. Copper, nice outside move here. Um, not, not bad there. So 4, 13, 6. So we're basically right at that red bar high. Um, and we're stalling out at the 20 moving average. We'll see what this does tomorrow. But nice little outside move there for copper. I still think it wants to go back down to these levels here and retest those. All right. Over to Bitcoin. Um, if we can get it up. There we go. So Bitcoin, obviously, we talked about this yesterday. Um, and I've been saying since middle of January, look, we're probably going to 25,000. Um, we lessened the chance of that with that little dump there. And then we negated that obviously yesterday, what was the high of the day 25256. So right into that area, might have a little bit of a topping tail potentially on Bitcoin. Let's take a look and see the intraday. Yeah, so that's selling off pretty nicely with everything else here. You don't want to see it break. Yeah, you break this 25 or excuse me, 243 area. Um, this could cascade pretty quickly, but we'll see. Again, markets may hold up. It is OPEX week, um, but Bitcoin did hit that price target finally. So um, we'll see what we get tomorrow here. I wish I could take you guys into the close. I'm very intrigued to see where this, this uh, ends up here. Obviously, I'll be able to talk about it with members um, as we'll be doing this right after the bell. Nice dump there on the spiders. Nice dump. Q's make, about to make a new low of the day. Interesting. Wow. So what did I say at the beginning of the video? Um, we should have followed through. We should have followed through here. And we're below yesterday's low now, well below it on the queues. And the semis were weak all day. Wow, look at the semis. So tomorrow, I wish I could take you guys into the close here, but if we close down here in this area tomorrow um, on the spiders, you're gonna have to watch, it might even come into play today, but you're gonna have to watch that 20 moving average. We close below that, um, that would be a significant change. Um, it's not a death sentence, but 20 moving average would be the first step. And then a daily close below 405, I think that gets you back to 400 very quickly, um, possibly even 395. So that's kind of what we're looking for here even though IWM selling off. Wow, look at that. So big rejection there at 195 on the Russell. Looks, Dow, Dow's holding up. Oh, actually, no, Dow's rolling over too. Wow. Big dump here. IGV new lows of the day. Netflix new lows of the day. What else? JPM. Nice dump. Microsoft new lows. Look at, look at Apple. Apple was just at 156 and it's at 154 in, the la in a half hour. Amazing dump there. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here and get ready for the live stream. You guys take care. Come find me at carnivaltraits.com. Talk to you all tomorrow.